By implementing search engine marketing, we were able to create 95,000 purchases, totaling over $10,000 in just one month. Search engine marketing is not only one of the most targeted forms of advertising, but will also bring in a ton of traffic across multiple keywords. SEM also allows you to target based on location, as well as keyword. So you know the people seeing your ad are the same people more likely to actually purchase. Hey, I'm Cargill, I'm a consultant with Life Marketing, and I help businesses just like yours every single day. Now, SEM may seem tough, but using only a few techniques, it's actually fairly easy to create and optimize a successful search engine marketing campaign. Because of the nature of keywords, SEM is a great way for small business owners to increase relevant traffic by targeting keywords that relate directly to their business or products. Before I get into all the nitty gritty, be sure to subscribe and like this video so you can stay up to date on all of our incredible tips, tricks, and best practice videos. All right. Let's go ahead and get started by defining SEM. SEM is search engine marketing. Okay, cut. That's the whole video, right? No, I'm just kidding. Actually, search engine marketing is a little more complex than it sounds. We are going to target keywords or search terms. Those are the actual words you type into Google to make sure we show up for people who are looking for a product or business like ours. Now, the most popular search engine is Google. Naturally, they are also the most popular for search engine marketing or SEM. On their platform, Google Ads, formerly known as Google AdWords, you can also practice SEM on Bing, Yahoo, YouTube, or Amazon. Okay, with that definition out of the way, let's jump into three important steps to get you started with SEM. Step one, search for keywords. Without keywords, you're sailing a ship without sails, driving a car without an engine, watching Netflix without a login. Okay, you get my point. Keywords are incredibly important. It's also worth mentioning that a single keyword can be multiple actual words. So for example, Bluetooth mouse, two words, but it's only one keyword. In Google Ads, there is a tool called Keyword Planner that allows you to type in a few root keywords to receive a whole bunch of keyword ideas, along with the keyword volume, cost per click, and competitiveness. Now, your root keywords that you type into that tool should be what you think someone would actually type to find your product or service. Some ideas for root keywords would be something like um, tapas restaurant Atlanta or customizable hats. Something broad enough to really give Google enough search data to pull relevant keywords into the keyword planner. Once you've done that, make sure you pick the keywords that are most relevant to your business. Search volume is important, but it is not everything. Relevancy is king when it comes to SEM. Don't pick a keyword just because it has 20,000 searches when a far more relevant keyword only has around 1,000 we'd much rather a higher percentage of the 1,000 searches goes to onto your site and actually purchases something than have more people from the 20,000, but go ahead and ruin our click-through rate and bounce rate if we do that. Now that you have your keywords, it's important to understand the different match types. All right, there are four main match types for keywords. First, we have exact match, where we put brackets around the keyword. Exact match is telling Google that we only want our ad to show up when someone types in exactly that keyword. So for example, if the keyword was restaurants in Paris, we would not show up for Japanese restaurants in Paris or American restaurants in Paris, only restaurants in Paris. Next is phrase match, where we put parentheses around the keyword. Phrase match tells Google that we would like to show up for any search term with our keyword in it. To take the restaurant in Paris example, with phrase match, we would show up for tapas restaurant in Paris or any keyword that had the phrase restaurant in Paris. 
However, we would not show up for American Restaurant Paris. All right, now third is broad match. This is where we do absolutely nothing to the keyword. We just put it into the ad group and this tells Google that we are willing to show up for any search term that has a portion of our keyword. If we did broad match for restaurants in Paris, we would be able to show up for any search term that included restaurant or Paris in it. We could show up for best Paris clubs or American restaurant near me. Now, unfortunately, this is the match type most first time advertisers use, and it leads to a ton of frustration because they are spending money on clicks that had no chance of being interested in their brand. Don't use broad match. Seriously, just, just don't use it, don't touch it. So those are the big three match types of Google, but I promised you four match types. Hmm. All right, the fourth and final match type is called broad match modified. This is where we put a plus sign in front of every word within our keyword. This tells Google that we want to show up for any search term that has all of the words in our keyword in it. Let's take a trip back to Paris for an example with broad match modified. We would be able to show up for American restaurant in Paris or restaurants in Paris near me, any search term that had all three words, restaurant, in, and Paris. Now the difference between this and phrase match is that we don't care what order the words come in, just so long as they are in the search term. Okay, that's keyword basics. Let's move on over to the second step for search engine marketing, which is bidding on your keywords. So now that you have your keywords, you'll need to tell the search engine how much you are actually willing to pay for each click at that keyword. By selecting the appropriate bids, you can show up for the first, second, or third position on Google. Now, I hope you've been paying attention because we're heading right on back to that Keyword Planner tool. So in the Keyword Planner tool, you'll see a top of page bid maximum and a top of page bid minimum. Most of the time, the actual top of page bid is going to be in between those two numbers. However, I recommend selecting the lower top of page bid because research has shown us that there's not that much difference in terms of click-through rate between the first position and the second position. Additionally, you can always increase the bids as you optimize your campaign. Now, each keyword is going to have its own bid that may seem like a lot of bids to manage, but there are actually a ton of automated bidding strategies that do almost all the heavy lifting for you. Now, the downside is that you could end up paying more per click with those automated strategies than if you optimize the bids yourself. Manually optimizing the bids can be a daunting task, so I know, but after a week or so, you'll really only have to alter the bids maybe just once a week. Having said that, automated bidding options do make it easy for first time users. I understand the appeal, but if you use one of those strategies, I would recommend maximize clicks over maximize conversions or target CPA. Maximize conversions or target CPA are useful when you have a lot more data in your account. Whereas maximize clicks will bid accordingly to make sure your ad is in the most clicked on spot for that keyword. I do want to reiterate though, manually changing your bids will lead to a lower cost per click, CPC, and a higher click through rate, CTR. Okay, now onto the third and final search engine marketing step creating your ads. Your ads are what you actually show to consumers on a search engine. They are an incredibly important part of search engine marketing. Your ads are what will actually show on Google to your consumer. There are multiple different aspects that go into crafting an excellent Google ad. And in a later video, we'll discuss the Google quality score in depth. For this video, however, I'll be giving you a general overview of Google Ads creation. Okay, Google advertisements are made up of three headlines and two descriptions. Now the three headlines each allow you 30 characters, that's three zero. Whereas each description allows you 90 characters, nine zero. 
Now, some best practices for headline one is to include the exact keyword you are bidding on. This increases your relevancy score, very important. Headline two and three should be a unique selling point in your brand name, unless your brand name is already in headline one because you're running brand protection ads or something like that. Now, each of these descriptions should discuss major pain points your customers have or great value ads your business provides. All of your ad copy or the text you put into the advertisement should relate to the keyword and your landing page. Saying that one again, relate to your keyword and your landing page. If you believe it is impossible to have copy that relates to both the keyword and the landing page, then you need to either choose new keywords or choose a completely different landing page. You should also create two ads per ad group. So you have room to split test your ads and see which one actually works best for your audience. All right, time to hear from you all. What keywords would you target? Which step would you like us to go more in depth on? Go ahead and let us know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date on all of our best practice videos. Let's sum up. What is SEM? It's search engine marketing and it's a great way to increase relevant website traffic and conversions. In this video, we discuss some basic keyword research, bidding, and ad creation best practices. Be sure to research your keywords and their associated bids, and make sure that your ad relates to both the keyword and the landing page. This increases your relevancy score, super important. Thank you all.